Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome back to our LinkedIn series in the pipeline. My name is Brian Zinn. I'm the CEO of Frazel Tech Company, Regora. This series is focused on highlighting thought leadership, you know, all throughout the mortgage, prop tech, fintech industry. Today, we have on one of the foremost authorities in the nation on real estate data, uh, Adam Data Solutions Executive Vice President, Rick Sharga. Thank you for joining us here. Pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. So I know that you've been everywhere. I think, you know, you've been on CNBC, NPR, all this sort of stuff. For the, for the folks who haven't seen you before, would you mind giving a quick background on yourself in terms of, you know, what you do and your company, things like that? Sure. I'm, I'm uh, currently the EVP of market intelligence for Atom Data Solutions. We provide real estate mortgage data to companies in the real estate, financial services, uh, and insurance industries, as well as educational institutions and, and government agencies. Um, uh, I've been with the company for a couple of years. Uh, I, I started in the business uh, probably about 20 years ago with a company called Realty Track that published the country's largest database of, of foreclosure information and uh, subsequently spent some time with Carrington Mortgage Holdings and Auction.com and 10X, which were uh, online uh, disposition platforms uh, for distressed residential and commercial properties. So been in the real estate mortgage space for the past 20 years. I've had the opportunity to talk to folks like you and your audiences uh, over that time to kind of communicate what's going on in the market. And in the in a, in a past life, uh, I actually spent most of my career doing technology marketing. So it's uh, it's been a little bit of a combination of both technology and real estate over the last several decades. Well, uh, that is why you are the the perfect guest for us here today, especially timing wise. We are in quite the unprecedented macro mm -hmm. environment with you know interest rates jumping up, extremely you know volatile real estate taking a huge hit from all of that. Would love to maybe just hear you know what is what is your take on the market, whether it's real estate, interest rates, you know all that sort of stuff. Well, if the Federal Reserve uh, had an objective of slowing down the housing market, uh, they have succeeded spectacularly. Uh, we, we're, we're in, a, in a, a very volatile period of time right now. Uh, housing sales uh, look like they're going to be down uh, about 15% year over year uh, compared to a year ago. Uh, prices are starting to decline in some markets. Um, I, I hadn't believed that was likely to happen, but I also didn't believe we were going to be seeing 7% mortgage rates this year. Uh, we have never seen, in, in my memory, a period where mortgage rates have doubled in so short a period of time. And the market, candidly, is just having a really, really hard time adjusting to that. So for the the home buyer who uh, was looking at a house last year and, and decided to wait a year, uh, that same house uh, is costing them about 50 to 60 percent more in mortgage payments on a month uh, than it would have if they purchased it in 2021. So the the impact on the housing market has just been uh, dramatic uh, and, and will likely not start to feel much better until uh, we, we get a little bit more certainty about the direction rates are headed um, and and even start to see them come down a little bit. And, you know, I, I got a question for you that, you know, we've been seeing a lot of comparisons in terms of like 08 and, you know, the current time period, but obviously credit writing standards, uh, you know, significantly improve. Do you think that you know, even if prices do drop pretty significantly, that we'll see a similar wave of foreclosures and kind of that spiral effect here, or do you think it'll be a little more mild? No, that's that's one of the favorite questions out there. And there's a lot of people with YouTube uh, uh, content that are trying to tell you about the housing crash so they can sell you thousands of dollars of, of useless training materials. Um, no, we're, we're, we're very, very, very unlikely to see anything like what we saw back in, in, in 2008. The the market dynamics are entirely different. Just to give you a couple uh, examples of that. Um, one of the reasons I don't expect to see home prices fall dramatically is because there's very little inventory. Uh, and, and if you're a homeowner today sitting on a 3% mortgage, uh, you're not going to be terribly anxious to trade that in for a 7% mortgage on a more expensive house. So we think inventory of existing homes is going to continue to be very tight. We believe we've seen the builders slow down housing starts for three months in a row right now uh, and are making noises about continuing the slowdown. So we're not going to see a ton of existing homes coming to market. And there is still pent up demand. We have the largest cohort of young adults between the ages of 25 and 34 in U.S. history. Most of them still want to be homeowners. 
so as properties do come to market, there's still demand for those properties. It, it's going to take a while for the market to adjust to the new pricing structure because of the interest rate increases. But but the lack of inventory is completely different from where we were last time. If you go back to when housing crashed in 2008, the, the years prior to that, we had a 13-month supply of homes available for sale. That's more than twice what the market can usually handle. Today, we're looking at about a three-month supply. So just from an inventory standpoint, you have a, a huge supply and demand difference between what we had last time. You mentioned underwriting standards. Uh, leading into the crash last time, there were 15 million borrowers with really bad adjustable rate loans that were all resetting at the same time. Uh, these are people who could only afford those loans because they got a teaser rate. Uh, their loan interest rates went from 2% to 6%. They had to sell their homes. They sold those homes into a declining market. A lot of those homes wound up in foreclosure, which de depressed prices even further, and it became a race to the bottom. So nationally, you saw home prices go down 30 to 35%. So we're not looking at anything like that right now. Foreclosure activity is still running at about half of, of the levels it ran prior to the pandemic. Uh, even then, foreclosure numbers weren't very weren't very high because the underwriting quality uh, of loans today has been extraordinary. <clears throat> Excuse me. And delinquency rates uh, have actually come down back below uh, historically normal levels. So very few delinquencies, even fewer foreclosures. Ninety percent of borrowers in foreclosure have equity in their homes. So if worse comes to worse, they're they're likely to be able to sell those properties. So. Again, market conditions are nothing like what they were heading into 2008. We will see an increase in foreclosure activity, uh, but it'll probably just get us back up to what would be normal levels historically. Um, and, and it won't feel anything like the tsunami that we all got hit with last time. <laughs> well, that, that is super helpful. And maybe to wrap things up, kind of a meta, meta analysis on this, I you know have heard an interesting theory in terms of like, when I, and I wasn't around, I was in high school when, when 08 was here, not not in this industry, but you know, it seems like at least from all the headlines that there is like all this noise to your point, trying to compare it to 08, even though it's you know clearly not the case in terms of everything that you just articulated. Do you think that social media, because it wasn't as prevalent, you know, during 2008, and just the constant barrage of headlines and news and zingers and all that? Do you think that social media has contributed, or like what what impact do you think that that has on kind of just the the market mindset versus maybe 2008? Yeah, that's a great insight. Um, and, and thank you for making me feel even older. High school in 2008, my God. Um, yeah, yeah I, I think social media has given everybody a publishing platform. Uh, and you can be pretty convincing on social media, even if you don't really know what you're talking about. So I, I would you know, encourage your viewers, your listeners to, to you know, be really selective about who they listen to, who they watch. Because you can worry yourself into a real problem uh, pretty quickly if, if you're in this kind of echo chamber where you're only hearing from other people who are predicting a crash. Um, the, 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 the old line in, uh, uh, in, 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 in newspaper and, and, and media circles used to be that, uh, that you know, bad news sells. And so you, you never have a shortage of people predicting the next crisis. Uh, but if you look at the numbers, uh, the numbers tell us that we're, we're not looking at anything like what we were looking at before. Uh, market conditions are going to vary depending on where you are locally. So we're already seeing uh, price declines, but but not major price declines. You're talking two, three, maybe 4% uh, in markets in California, the Pacific Northwest, some of the so-called Zoom towns uh, like Boise, Idaho and, and St. George, Utah, where prices went up 35, 45% last year. Uh, so you're going to see some price corrections, but, but we're also seeing areas in the South and the Southeast where prices are still going up. So it really it really depends on on where you are. Real estate still is a very localized market for people that are are doing appraisals, looking for appraisal um, uh, insights. You have to be really cognizant of what's going on in your market. So if you're in a market where population is growing, where jobs are growing, you know odds are your housing market is going to be in a lot better shape than if you're in a market in you know say in, uh, in Illinois or New York or or California where population is leaving. So, you know, you have to become an expert at your local market conditions and try not to pay as much attention to the noise online as 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 you'd be tempted to. Yeah. Well, Rick, super insightful. Appreciate you 
jumping on here today. I, I'm sure the audience will get a lot, and hopefully I think you've eased the mind of a, of a lot of folks. Um, so yeah, appreciate you joining us here today. Thanks for having me and uh, let's do this again sometime. Yeah, sounds good.